I switched all of our flower beds over from mulch to landscape stone last year and I've been extremely happy with that. But there's a couple little areas I'd like to tweak yet and this is nothing new. And I like how this looks here. We've got a sandbox for the kids and the patio and it creates these sharp inside corners that I think look pretty well. I like it, um, but there's one problem with it. And the problem is these inside corners are extremely hard to mow. So what I end up doing is using a string trimmer to do them. And you can see I do some damage on it. So what I'm thinking is to use some gradual curves here so I can ride along this edge with the lawnmower and mold this grass a lot easier. So I don't have to do this back and forth jockeying and then do the majority of it with the string trimmer anyway. I'm going to start with some spray paint and just kind of put up, lay out my proposal and see if I like it. Then we're gonna work on basically adding to this flower bed with weed barrier and landscape stone and edger. So let's see how that works. So I've got a proposal sprayed out there. It doesn't look too bad. The idea here is I'm working with the curves of what's existing. You can see the patio has, has a curve on the end of it. So the idea is I'm gonna try to match that coming off of the patio and then kind of do a smooth transition to the curve here. What this does is not only follow kind of the terrain but it also makes it easy to mow. With the riding lawnmower, you can follow those gentle curves. And anytime you do try to do a straight line with these bullet edgers, it's not gonna be perfect. So when you've got these gentle rolling curves, I think it looks better to the eye. Plus you cannot, I at least can't make a perfect straight line. So when you try to go straight, it looks worse than if you have this nice gentle curves. Not a big difference, but something like that. So the first thing I have to do is pull out these edgers. I have the edgers pulled out and then I just push the, the stones back enough to make sure I can overlap the weed fabric. It's amazing how much dirt and debris gets on top of this stuff after only one year and I'm quite careful I try to prevent that but anyway I'm not going to spray this grass off um, with high quality weed, weed barrier over the top of this turf it will just die off no need to do that I do need to take a shovel and bring this level down so I've got some elevation to put to put the fabric and landscape stone over the top of this so i gotta just shovel away from this a bit um this end i'm gonna put the edgers right on top of the turf on top of the weed barrier we'll go over that just to match up with the elevation of the patio here i want to try to match that so we'll see how that is i do think i'm gonna have to peel a little bit of this turf out uh, to match the elevation here. We'll see how that goes. Um, just so we're kind of flat with this existing weed bed or the existing flower bed there. So I might carve a little bit of that out. And then at the transition here, so my edgers match up elevation wise here i'll have to carve a little bit out and then i'll just transition to go on top here but first step is uh we'll get the shovel out and just kind of take down those areas we just talked about the nice thing about this landscape stone or mulch we don't have to get our elevations perfect. We can fudge on that top layer and make things look smooth and nice. So that's good. I don't mind what's here. Now it's just a matter of this transition zone.
I'm happy with the elevation now, so it's time to put down the weed fabric. This is just the best stuff that the local box store had. I don't recommend using plastic. The idea of this stuff is that water can still get through it, and if you have plastic, it can't. And that messes things up. It doesn't let air get into the soil, things like that either. Um, but I'm just gonna lay this down. You can get these staples that hold this down nice. But what I found works just as good as your regular old nail. So I'm gonna use nails, hold that in place, cut it. We should be in business here in a couple minutes. Now that we've had this pinned down, it's much easier to cut. So I'm gonna use, start at my yellow line and just cut over to the other side. This doesn't have to be super precise, but what your goal is, is to overlap or to have this weed barrier underneath your paver. If you try to do it like this on the inside, you're gonna get things that grow up between the two. So what I recommend is, is having it at least halfway underneath, underneath your paver. And uh, you should be good to go there. You can see this is all wobbly, so when we put these edgers down, we need to compact the soil a little bit to get these to fit, to sit down nicely. But we're, I'm gonna finish with the weed barrier first. Fabric's done. I need to go get a drink before I pass out. It's like 75 degrees and sunny, but I live way up in the north here. I'm not used to this. I'm sweating profusely. Woo! I've decided to put a hat on and go shoeless. Hey, it's not that warm here that often. I'm gonna start on this end with my edgers to make sure I match this elevation here and then also the number of edgers I need. I want the cut one to be on that end that can hide it better, it'll look better. So I want this end to match up properly. Um, what I like to use is a rubber mallet. Set the edger in place, you can beat on it. It will compress that soil so I can match up the two here and, uh, and get it set right so it's not wobbling around. One thing to watch out for when you're doing this is these two tabs on the back. If you have pressure on this and you hit it with the maul, you can easily chip these two off. So you wanna look in this gap and make sure there's not too much pressure on the one before it or you'll, or you'll break those off. The other thing I like to do as we're working here, is step back, take a look, see if we're following the desired line. It's nice and smooth. Looks like we're off to a good start. Maybe this last one, we could just tip in a little bit.
One other thing we can do is if we gently tap out on this, we can get a little bit, again, being careful with this joint, can easily bust these up if you hit too hard. Now you can see I busted off a piece on this one. Thankfully, it's on the inside. That'll be covered with landscape stone. This side is done. All that's left to do is just fill it with landscape stone. I think that curve turned out pretty well. I'll be able to easily follow that with the lawnmower and not have those inside corners to deal with anymore. I don't love how this one is matching up. It's a little bit too long. So what I'm gonna do is cut this off with a diamond blade on my grinder, chip that piece off, and then it should be able to tuck in there a little bit nicer. Right now it's time to get some landscape stone. I'm at my local yard, which is like a mile and a half from the house. And I'm just gonna fill up buckets, get paid by the bucket. So it's easy to move around that way instead of getting a big delivery or filling up a trailer. Unfortunately, I just have three buckets today. I should probably buy more. I'm gonna make a few trips, but we'll see how far these three go. Well, that sure looks better and it's a lot easier to mow. I don't know why I didn't do that sooner, but it probably has something to do with the amount of sweat coming off of me. It's not the easiest work, but it does sure look good when it's done. I hope, you, I, hope I gave you some ideas and inspired you to make some changes. My advice is if you've got something that's hard to mow, just change it. Thanks for watching. Adios.